Pins provides a way to easily share things, either across projects or across people. What ends up happening oftentimes in, in data science work, we have some asset and maybe it's um, data or it's a model or it's some other R object. And we either need to um, reuse this asset later on downstream or across different projects, or we might need to share it with different members of our team. You know, we, we say anything that can be serializable in R. So think about like how you might stick something on a cork board so you can keep it handy, right? Or, you know, you'd stick a flyer on a community bulletin board at the grocery store, right? So that other people can see it. Um, and so the pens package pens objects to what's called a board. And this is analogous to this cork board um, idea. And so this board um, is this place where files are written and they're read from. Um, examples of boards are things like, you know, you can have a board that's S3 storage, um, shared folders like network drives or Dropbox. Um, you can have um, your RCU Connect be a board, um, a SharePoint site be a board. Really, it's just, it's just a file store, a file share. Nothing magical about that. It's just pins has a nomenclature and a way of organizing things in this place on the board so that you can interact with them um, through the package. Okay, so what I'm hearing is I can pin all kinds of things in all kinds of locations. Yes. It works nicely with Connect, um, but there's nothing specifically implemented in pens for Connect. Um, there, you know, the, the things that Connect does to make life for pens a little bit better, Connect will give you access to the same sharing, content sharing settings that you have for any piece of content on Connect. So I can you know, put my pin on Connect and I can specify who should be able to access it and share it. Um, and then and then pins, um, pins does have a nice preview of the um, pinned object. I like that feature, but that's that's connect. That's that's a connect implementation for how it reads pins. Nothing specific in the pins package itself. So if I work by myself, either in a what for whatever reason I am a team of one, how might I use pins? A lot comes down to um, what are your pain points, and like what do you have available to you already for storing data, sharing data, accessing data downstream, things like that. All right. Um, so, do you, in your team of one, do you need to reuse something in other work? Right. Do you have like a reference table or you know some kind of other information? that multiple projects are going to use. You might need to come back to this. Pins could be a pretty good use case for that, right? Um, or, you know, do you, do you just not have a convenient place to put things? You know, Pins comes in and gets to be really helpful when you just maybe don't have another place to store data. Sometimes, um, you know, teams that don't have ready access to a database um, you know, find pins to be pretty helpful because it kind of makes them self-sufficient. They can be more autonomous in this way. You don't have the mechanism to, you know, either get a hold of a database or have one set up, or even like the data that you're working with isn't, um, isn't, uh, what's the right word, you know, worthy of being in the database, right? Um, then, then you can use a pen as a place to, I'm going to have this, um, nice location where it's organized, it's versioned. Um, I can work through cached versions of it as well, so things go faster, um, and it it helps to alleviate other pain points. If you have places like, if if putting things in Dropbox or on GitHub or if, if those things are working for you already, then you know you don't need to bring this tool into your toolbox per se. Sort of like what pain points do you have and what needs do you maybe have in terms of being able to track versions um, or share things more readily. That was sort of my entry point for pins too, is working with Excel files just like that, right? And and what do you do when you've got this Excel file in your workflow? At some point, you're gonna get another version of it, right? And either on the file server where the, where the file's stored or in your code, 
every time there's a new version, you're going to go in there and rename it, right? And so <laughs> you're, it's going to be final version one or latest copy or whatever, right? Final, like, final, 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 right? With your initials on the end. And so somewhere along the line, you're going to be putting some kind of hacked versioning nomenclature on it. And there's this introducing possibility for error, of course, right? Um, how many times you've like gone in and you've run your whole analysis and realize, oh, I forgot to change the read underscore CSV to the latest version, right? Or, you know, or do you actually have you know, um, um, more um, rigor of like going to the file server and changing the file name so that the latest version is always called whatever, you know, data.csv and then everything else is archived. In some form or fashion, you're implementing this like hacky way of keeping things current. Um, whereas with pens, right, you can pin that CSV and so pens has different options for versioning, but, you know, fundamentally you can have pens always pull the latest version. And so whenever, you know, your code just says pen read, you know, data from my pen board, uh, it's always going to pull the latest version. Or if you want to get specific, you can say, I'm, I want this particular version always in each and every time so that even if new versions come online, then you're, you're always referencing the specific one. Let's say I'm using Dropbox. Mm. Do I just get one board or can I set up different boards for different projects? Or is it like one board per system? Like I get one Dropbox board, one Google Drive board, one Connect board. Yeah, like it took it took me a while to kind of get my mind around what well, this thing called a board. It It sounds like there's magic under the hood or something really special about boards. Um, there's, there's nothing really super exciting about boards per se. It's a file path, basically. <laughs> it's a file path. So, so I, I, I have, um, I have on my, on my screen here, this is my browser window here, right? I, I started a Dropbox um, uh, location. I have a folder called pens. Like I manually created this folder called pens. And so earlier today, I just started pinning stuff. But this, this is all that my board is. My board is a file path that's users, Katie, Dropbox, pins. Um, you know, and this is, this is where I've defined it. This is my board. And what happens when you define a board, it just says like, this is where I'm gonna go write or read my files and where they live. Um, you know, and while we're here, right, what are these, what are these magical mythical pens look like on the file path it's not that special so it's it's um a hash of the date and the time and a, and a particular um, hash for the pen itself and two things inside here's an rds file with my um my classic penguins data and here's a text file it's just got metadata included in it so you know if if i wanted to i could go and just go into my code and read that RDS file manually. Oh, now that it's not like once a pen, always a pen. It's just a thing. It's just a serializable thing in R. But pens is going to make it easier for me to find these locations, work with them in a consistent manner, pull them in, read them in, and kind of interpret and work with this metadata overall. One of the first things that you do with pens is define your board, right? And like I said, your board can be on Connect, it can be on S3, it can be GitHub or, or, or folder URL, local or whatever. Um, so in this case, just I like being able to sort of see what we're doing while we're playing. So I'm creating this board that's just a folder. Um, this folder happens to be my Dropbox um, path here, right? But I can, to my heart's content, let's make another board and um, make it versioned. We'll talk about that in a second. Old folder. Oh gosh, I have to type all this. <laughs> you know the autocomplete? Dropbox, this is fabulous. And root. So I've created two different definitions for my board. For my board. Okay. This one's versioned. This one, oh, sorry. This one is not versioned. 
this one is version. It's the same file path. Okay. I can have multiple boards, right? I'm just okay. describing with each definition of board, I'm just describing where it is, how I'm accessing it and different characteristics of it. So for example, you know, these two different boards, regular board and board versions, I'm just saying when I'm using this file path, when I'm using this board, either do or don't automatically keep multiple versions of my pin for me. And so there's different ways, you know, for, for dealing with, with versions. Um, you can define things at this higher level on the board level and says, anything that I pin to this board, I want it automatically to be versioned. Um, you know, and, and for example, um, if you're doing a, um, uh, our studio connect board by default, the RS connect, um, board itself is versioned equals true just out of the box default. Um, but typically, typically the versioning is, is false is, is turned off by default. Um, and if so, then you can also then do versioning at the pen level. And so you can see down here as I've defined my pen, getting ahead of ourselves, define my pen, I can specify, even if my board isn't versioned, I can make my specific pen versioned and then have different, different iterations of it. Okay, that's, that's really cool. Caching is another nice feature, right? Mm -hmm. That once you pull, once you, once you've got it set up, you've pulled in your pen, um, there will be a cached version of that. And so um, it will only pull a fresh version if their data has changed. And so it can be a time saver utilizing that cache overall. Are there some limits? Can I just pin everything? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be irresponsible. Um, there's, you need to think a little bit about what's appropriate. So there's sort of two elements, right? What's appropriate in terms of what are you trying to pin? Um, is it something that maybe belongs in a database? Um, you know, don't, don't use pens for long-term archival storage of data, right? Things like your, your crown jewel data, don't make that a pen. That needs to go in a database, right? There are best practices around data and databases and backing things up and access all of these things. Don't replace your databases with pens. A good practice is to um, make the pinnable object something that is reproducible, hmm. right? Don't count on your pen being your source of truth for all of eternity. Make sure it's something that you can programmatically reproduce. Um, pins are often really good with like ephemeral data stuff. that's just like coming in, it's sort of in the middle of my process. I kind of need to stick this somewhere and then be done and keep working with it. Um, ephemeral data is really good, really lightweight data, you know, lookup tables, stuff like that. Things that make your life easier is good to use for a pen. Um, and then in terms of size, a few hundred megabytes is great. Um, if it's, um, really, if it's too big for Excel, it's too big to pen, um, <laughs> kind of a, <laughs> don't push it. So we talked about boards already, right? Boards, it's not magic. Think of it just as a file path. Where am I going? Um, and so in this case, let's just use this board here. That is my Dropbox location. Get rid of this one here. If I'm on the board, so first of all, I can just do um, a quick query. It's like, what's out there? So I'm going to do board and pins is pipeable, um, which is nice. So you can work with it, right? I don't typically, you know, define my board as my first step and then pipe that into all of my different functions. So we'll pipe board into pin list and you can see here's all of my pens that I have. And this is mimicking, right? It's, it's bringing in what you can see here in my file browser. Um, there's also, if you're not quite sure what's out there, or if you kind of want to get more information, pen search is nice. Pen search will search the, um, the names and the titles of your pens. 
Um, so in this instance, I don't have very many pins. So I'm just gonna search with a blank query the, with the double quotation marks. And it does present kind of in a nicer format than just the list that we got in the last one, right? You can see a little bit more information we created and the file size and whatnot. Um, and like I said, it will search the name and the title. Um, so if I'm looking for penguins, I've got two pins, right? I've got penguins and I have <laughs> not penguins, right? So searching those different things. Um, but this is good for finding things, right? Um, you can also, so pins has metadata associated with them, which can be pretty helpful. Um, so I've got this pen here. It's um, not super exciting, but it's just a timestamp. Um, but the metadata associated with that, I can see what it is. And in this case, when I pinned it, you can also include your own custom metadata. Um, so that can be very useful as you're building out a project or you wanna put specific things into that metadata, um, there is a place to put that into, into the metadata. You can see how I put that in up here as I wrote this pin and I just specified the metadata as a list. I love that. And then different versions, we've talked about versions, right? So I can see what versions I have. So here in my pins versions for timestamps, I've got five different versions. And let's just see for sanity, right? Over here in my actual file browser, here's my five different versions. And you can see, you know, I mean, it, it does get to be um, duplicative, right? It's just copy, copy, copy one after another. So it's not, not the smartest package in terms of file space, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of going back to this use pins if it makes your life easier, it's kind of quick and dirty and it's there to help you with, help you to kind of get things done. Are there more mm -hmm. elegant ways of doing things? Sure, are there maybe better workflows for long-term archival data storage? Absolutely, but pins is definitely useful in these use cases. So we've talked about the pen read and its complement, um, the, the pen write and the pen read um, functions. There uh, is another set of functions for pen upload and pen download. Oh, okay. And so these, these kind of take a little bit of uh, an abstraction layer further out. Um, and really this is for being able to pen any kind of file, okay. like an R data file, for example. Right, so if you have an R data file, again, here's my board, my Dropbox board. I have this R data file. And what is it, right? It's just this collection of my four different variables and things that I like to have for breakfast. Um, so if I wanted to put this on a board, I'd use the pin upload function. And pin upload, right, we can, Sort of see what's going to happen over here. I have this, I have this over here, right? And this is looking familiar, right? Here's my hash, but here's my R data file itself. No magic there, right? Here's my metadata, and it's just tidally nested over here in my um, in my file folder. Um, and 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 you'll note here, right? It's replaced the version that I had before, as opposed to appending a version because I didn't tell it mm -hmm. I want a version for. Um, and so the complement to pin upload is pin download. Okay. And what pin download does is it returns a path to the cached file that it's downloaded, right? So what does that look like? Here's my output. Here's where it's living. Here's where it's downloaded that file and cached it. And so I can now, right, if I want to bring that object in, pins, board, path to cached file, right? I have my path and let's just load it. So you can use pin upload and pin download to be able to bring other objects, files, things like that, into that structure that pins provides for being able to read metadata play with versions, call things, have caching, things like that. It's um, one of the legacy functions um, in the API and sort of what, what, what that means, right? So the first 
iteration, I would say, of, of the PINS package had a different overall format and different API behind it for doing the read and write functions. And so um, in, gosh, maybe nine months ago, maybe a year ago, um, I don't know, pandemic time, <laughs> pandemic time, it doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> a little while ago, um, uh, a, a, new, um, a new version, a new um, API version um, of pins came out and it started with pins version 1.0. We're at 1.01 .01 right now, I believe. And that um, retooled under the hood, the API that was um, um, calling and writing and interacting with pin boards. Um, and we also saw some of the older functions drop off. Um, that being said though, um, that doesn't mean, so Google Cloud doesn't mean that that's not going to be a board in the future. Um, there's currently an issue right now um, on the repo to, um, to bring Google Cloud as one of the um, uh, new implementations of the boards. And really it's just a matter of if, if that's something that's useful for folks, um, we just need people to go in and put a plus one um, on the issue to help weigh the priority for developing that. So we've talked about, we've talked about um, pinning, pinning data, pinning data frames, things like that. But pinning models is a really nice workflow. Um, and all of the work that Julie has been doing around Vetiver, um, I think showcases that really nicely. Um, and so what you can do with the package, right? With, with, with Vetiver, you can pin a Vetiver model. Um, and then with that, you'll have all of the information about that model that you need to deploy it um, and call it and work with it. And so then you can, you can then um, call that model or different versions of that model into other assets downstream, right? Okay. So a super simple example of that. Um, so earlier today, let's see, what do I have? I borrowed some of Julia's nice work here. Um, a, um, a model that she has just demonstrated here uh, with home, home prices in Sacramento. She's using a random forest model um, and creating this model, um, saving it as a vetiver model. Um, and if we do this, right, let's actually look at this, what this looks like. All right, so what is B? B is a ranger regression modeling workflow using four features. So with this, I'm gonna pin this. In this case, again, I'm gonna just pin it on my Dropbox folder. So we'll pin this and where's my model? So I have these different models here. And now I'm going to use this model. So first of all, one of these workflows that she's illustrated is to wrap this model up into an API so that you can ping it and query it, right? So I'll take this model and my background job here. There's functions within the Vetiver package for creating a Vetiver API. Um, in this case, I'm just going to run this locally. Um, I could publish my API, I could publish it somewhere, host it on Connect, or host it in some other place that I have in my infrastructure. But right now, I'm just going to run this locally so I can ping off of this. And what this looks like, so if we run this, this is just running locally. This has a nice swagger interface so I can test out and check, try my model, right? So first I'm going to um, just do a, this is just a, a ping, right? And it's just responding with the time and the date. But if I wanna run this locally, so I'm actually gonna run this as a background job because when this is, when this is running, right, let me run this again, right? If this is running, it's just consuming and occupying my console so I can't interact with it. <laughs> so a, a whole lot of good that does is I'm gonna run this as a background job so that I can interact and still play with my console. So here's my background job and I'm going to run this. And this is now running. So if I just go to a browser 
right, let's pull up a browser window. So here I'm in a browser window, just like we had in the preview, but now I have a console window. Okay. And so I'm gonna use my model that's been pinned. And I'm going to define an endpoint. My endpoint is this prediction endpoint here. And I'm going to create some new data and then predict off that endpoint. And so I just run predictions off of that pinned model that I have hosted as that I have running as an API in the background. But what's nice is that right in this model that I'm running, I remember I pulled it from a pen, mm -hmm. a vetiver pen. I specified the version. So say I had a different version of this model that I wanted to run. Well, let's see, you know, which versions do I have? I've got three different versions right here. Right? I want to instead, you know, grab this version. So, oops. right, if I wanted to use this version, then I would just change here which, which particular version that I'd be reading in from my pen and serving up via my API overall. And so this is a nice way that you can toggle back and forth and try different versions of your pinned model.